time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, on the way to the studio today, I had a real unusual experience. Um, I usually go to town because I really don't like freeways. And, um, and I have to go from Lacey, Washington to Olympia, Washington. That's about eight miles, a little more than eight miles for the friends that don't live here. And uh, so here we had this traffic jam and it almost appeared like it was going onto the freeway. And um, since this is taped uh, not too far away from Christmas, you know, people are really a little in a hurry and, and anxious about things, but uh, nobody really seemed to mind. So it took a while to work around um, from one lane to another to make that left turn to pass other cars. And eventually I saw what had created the traffic jam. And in essence, what had happened, there was a seagull sitting in the middle of the street and everybody, maybe because of the holidays or they felt unconditional love or who knows why, um, drove around the seagull and, um, and I kind of admired that. And uh, I really thought to myself, today people are really nice in Olympia. And uh, then the other side of my head said, oh well, down here at our uh, landfill, they just okayed for us to shoot these animals at the rate of 200 a day. And maybe people got into guilt and just wanted to save that one seagull from sudden death and getting run over. And so um, it kind of really fit in with the show we're going to do today because sometimes we can not agree with something on a large scale and then feel in a roundabout way we can make a difference one seagull at a time. And um, because we do go with the flow, um, I thought, that story was really meant for today's um, taping here, and that's why I'm sharing this with you. A few weeks ago, you met a gentleman, his name is Larry Dodge, um, and he told sort of some things out of his life, and he's also a, um, a photographer, and he shared wonderful pictures with you. And at that time, he had promised to come back, and um, so today, um, we have asked him to come back, and he has a dual purpose here. He came um, back like we requested to give you some more details um, and inside information um, of the first time ever that we discuss a organization fully. And the other purpose is he came in person to receive a the Human of the Year Award. So without any delay, I'm going to introduce you to Larry Dodge. And I'm so glad you came back to visit with us, Larry. Well, likewise, Lillian. It's my pleasure. You changed your hair. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I got run over by a lawnmower, and it, somehow it worked. And, and there it was. Opening shot, I want to say something about the opening shot. That uh, was done by um, our friend in yours, Margaret Brennan. And she actually designed that for the feature web page. Yes. But if you can make it out, you'll see there are 12 completely different kinds of mm -hmm. people, each pulling on a rope mm -hmm. that holds down the forces of tyranny that is represented by a dragon. Mm -hmm. And that's what we hope our organization does, because those 12 people could be 12 different kinds of people sitting on a jury. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do not know this, but I, I'm sure I'll get a chance to explain yeah. it. Uh, 12 ordinary citizens of di from different walks of life pulling together as a jury can hold down the forces of tyranny in our own country. Mm -hmm. And that is precisely what they were expected to do by the Founding Fathers. That's right. Now, um, during the summer when I traveled, um, I want to refresh your friend's memory. We did, I called my legal shows with uh, Patricia. Michael. Michael, thank you. <coughs> and Tom Stahl, and you really, really liked them. And we did the um, uh, slavery, slavery in America show. And um, this whole thing went so well. So when I go and do my lectures and things, um, people pay enormous amounts of money for uh, workshops and things. So I thought, well, I'm just going to do a freebie. And because I wanted to have a three-dimensional cause, um, I was allowed to give a, like a workshop, um, a fee. A, feature. a, feature, uh, yeah, a jury duty workshop. And one of the things that people ask, uh, usually they sometimes say psychics fairs, sometimes they um, UFO conventions and, and these things. And this lady said to me, um, what does that have to do with me? And I said to her, well, actually, you, you know that this is a free universe. 
uh, you make your own decisions and um, and you have a, a, a sense of justice. So you will really be surprised how feature and and what you're about to learn in this workshop fits in with who you really are. And that really turned out to be the case. And when you asked me about it, I, I said, a love and light conference, and you said, what's a love and light? Now I know. Yeah, and, and that's what it is, because they like-minded people that take responsibility for themselves, pretty much like we wish the whole world could do. And because it is a free choice, some people chose not mm -hmm. to. So before we get into um, FIJA and how the organization itself came about, I'm going to um, I'm going to congratulate you on accepting. Oh, I don't know if you're going to accept it, but we're going to try to give it to the the Human of the Year Award. And um, what that does, we from the, from our show here and the circle of friends that we have all over the world, we pick one person a year that that is a, a real human being, meaning that they just spread their love and light and they make a difference to so many uh, people. And so I would, I'm honored to present you with the Human of the Year Award for the year 2000. Lillian, I am very honored. I, uh, I had a hint you were gonna pull something like this, yeah. but it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll hold it up for the camera somewhere. Yes, it's, it I, I says, don't know where you want it, and you'd be nice enough to read it. It says, your vision makes a difference one juror one at a juror. time. One juror. Did I spell that right? You spelled everything correctly here. Wonderful. It's just fine. I get a little turned around sometime, and, and that's really what it is, one juror at a time. Well, thank you so much. It reminds me of your one seagull. As a matter of fact, the whole point of, of what we're doing is based mm -hmm. upon the idea of one juror at a time being able to do some real good. Some real good. It wasn't it something, and that is what happened to me on the way here. And I said, how am I going to open this show? And here's that seagull sitting in the middle of the street, and everybody drove right around it. And they were executing them on the other, <laughs> on the other end of the street, you know, the other end of town. Isn't that sad? Yeah. And ironic. Yeah, so. Well, more than once, uh, one juror with his or her head screwed on straight has saved a bad conviction, saved somebody from being punished uh, either much more than he deserved or for doing, uh, for, or being punished for something he didn't do at all. No, he didn't do it all, yeah. Because that one juror had his or her senses about him and said, this is not right. Yeah. I can't vote with the other 11 of you. Mm -hmm. So the idea of one juror, well, it gets back to your point about, you know, each person having his own power. Yeah, that's very true. And the one place you can express it best is on a jury, and that's why this is, means so much. I'm glad you worded the plaque the way you did. Well, um, we're not always perfect, but we, we try to be. Now, to remind the friends, uh, with Patricia and, um, and Tom, what we did is we gave a a full presentation, how everything works and why it is. Uh, we quoted laws and we quoted um, Judge Goodlow, oh, yes. uh, SA, uh, the Supreme Court Justice from Washington State. And so um, I've had requests for Vivan for the show and I will do that. So what I think where I'd like to go with you today uh, at this time is how did feature become a reality? So tell me the trailer story. There you go. Well, it's, it's interesting to me. I hope it's interesting to your audience. It is. Uh, about 30 years ago, or maybe it's just 20, I was at a conference, and a speaker came to the conference and, the, uh, and said, I'm going to tell you some stuff about your Constitution that, I, that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody at this conference, it happened to be a, a Libertarian Party uh, convention, thought he knew all about the Constitution. So of course everybody went like this right off the bat, and the body language says, "Okay, go ahead and go ahead and tell me something I don't know about this Constitution." The speaker was Red Beckman from uh, Billings, Montana, and he told us something about the Constitution that we didn't know. He told us what the real meaning of trial by jury was. That's right. And we thought, like most Americans are taught in the government schools today, 
that it's uh, 12 people that are selected to decide whether or not the guy did it. Yeah. And if he did it, you say guilty, and if he didn't do it, you say not guilty, and that's all we knew. He said, when that Constitution was written, the word jury was a much more important and inclusive term than it is today. If you look up the definition that was used by the people who wrote the Constitution mm -hmm. for the word jury, you'll find it means that those 12 people are supposed to judge not only whether he did it, yeah. but whether the law is a good law. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was kidding until I looked up the early Webster's dictionary and the early Bouvier dictionary that was used in those days by the founders, and it's true. The jurors have this job of judging the law as well as the fact, and that was built into the idea of sitting on a jury. Now, what does it mean in practical application? It means that the people are in charge of the government mm -hmm. because they get to judge the laws of the land when they are asked to apply them in a particular case. Mm -hmm. If jury after jury finds a law to be defective, Right. and therefore refuses to apply it, a great deal of pressure goes back to the lawmakers mm -hmm. saying, you better change this law or we won't elect you to office anymore. Yeah, like, like prohibition and like prohibition. slavery. That, that, that seems was a, that prohibition is a perfect with. case in yeah. point. Now, we also, uh, doing the, the, the shows we did on the jury duty, um, I don't even know how that happened, but this is the strange and shows the vote scam got in there some kind of way we ended up with vote scam. And I like to state the date of this taping, and today is uh, December the 4th, 2000, and we are right in the middle of this. More vote scam. Yeah, vote scam, you know, how prophetic. <laughs> the worst vote scam expose yeah. we've ever had yeah. to face. And, and, and so, so by us mentioning this, so even four months, even three months ago, some of the friends uh, you know, if you're not familiar with these things and don't pay attention, you cannot comprehend that. So much like O.J. Simpson, this mess he <laughs> here yeah. put everything on the map. And so you probably understand what Larry is telling you a lot easier because you now have a visual of the circus that goes well, on yeah. in the courts. What vote scam should mean yeah. is that you don't control the government with your vote. That's right. If you get one message out of understanding that, that there's a lot of cheating, mm -hmm. a lot of miscounting um, uh, in the voting process, if you, the chances that you are actually going to control the government by voting, by voting is, is pretty slim. Pretty slim. But as a juror. As a juror, uh, right. you are one of 12, mm -hmm. hopefully. Some states have reduced it to six, six. in some yeah. kinds of cases. Mm -hmm. but. You're one of a handful of people that have got to look each other in the eye around a table. And you can say, you can't hey, hide hey, your vote. I didn't say that. I didn't yeah. say that. And Isn't, you can speak up. The ballots aren't say. secret. Yeah. There isn't 10 million people voting. It's yeah. just 12 people. Yeah. So your vote is obvious, and you have to explain it. Yeah. I think he's not guilty <laughs> because. And then the others say, but I think he's guilty because. And so it becomes a discussion and your vote is very it's it's a it's a well reasoned vote in front of witnesses mm -hmm. that you have to take a personal stand for you can be the one seagull that's right in there you can be the one person that says i don't think it's right to let him go or i don't think it's right to send him to jail and make your vote stick one juror can hang a jury they can now yeah. And then they have to either give up the prosecution or start all over again with a new case, throw that jury out, declare a mistrial, and start fresh. And that's a lot of power. Now, now did did something happen in in your in your personal life? Or was